Looks like the government has its hands full. Let's see. Yeah, I'll say it does. But did you ever notice when there's any real trouble, they always call the government. They never call on you state troopers. Are you off on that subject again? Yes, Colonel. I'll say you are. Way off. Hey, Jane. How do I look? Wonderful. Hey, Jane. Can't you see I'm busy, Freddy? There you are, Johnny, a full-fledged trooper. Thanks, sis. Come on, Jane, hurry up. I'm starving. Give me my paper. Let me finish reading it. Excuse me, Major. Well, get the toast, Johnny. We'll eat right away. Ah, food. Hey, don't read at the table. Here it is, your brother's first day on the troop, and all you can think of is food. Well, gosh, Tom came all the way from the barracks to celebrate with us, and... Hey, I'll bet you're hungry, too, aren't you, Tom? Oh, uh, little. Come on, quit stalling. All right. I guess I could eat. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to feed the animals. See what she thinks of the troopers, don't you? I meant you. Oh. Well, a guy's got to eat. Well, we want to have another state trooper in this family. She's getting one. I'll say in a darn good one. Thanks, trooper. Don't pay any attention to him, Tom. He's just read apple on the account of that, uh, you know. Come on. Oh, good morning, Mr. Renderberry. Well, here goes my appetite. What's that? Uh, I said I hope you have a good appetite. Huh. It's a nice day, isn't it? Feels like rain. Rheumatism's bothering me again. Oh, what a shame. But it's a nice day for us, Mr. Berry. Look. Yes, it's uh, Johnny's first day with the troopers. To the troopers! Sit down. Yes, Major. Sorry, Colonel. I hope you don't get into no trouble, young man. I'll try not to, sir. Well, you don't have to worry about these troopers. Well, they lead the life of Riley. Anybody could catch the cream puffs, they do. Sherlock Holmes knows all, sees all. Yeah, we'll answer this one. How many troopers did it take to capture Joe Crane? We're here now. Uh, never mind. I'll answer. Thirty. Thirty great big troopers picking on one poor little guy. Don't forget the automobiles and the motorcycles. Oh, you. no. How many of those did you have? Never mind. I'll get it, sis. Troopers. Well, hello, Tony. Come on in. Hello, Freddy. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, not so bad. Uh, your sister, she is at home? Yeah, she just sat down to breakfast. Oh. Well, uh, maybe I better come back some other time. No, oh, come on in and have a cup of coffee with us. Well, all right. Okay. <laughs> Sis, Tony wants to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Buongiorno. A very nice morning to you, Mrs. Shields. And to all the rest of you. Mmm, smell good. Won't you sit down and have some coffee? Oh, well, I... Uh, sure, come on, Tony, sit down. All right. You insist. <laughs> ah, thank you. Go ahead, Tony, help yourself. You know, I was just telling them how easy these state troopers really have it. When the real trouble starts, they always call in the federal government. What started it was, the government's called in all the gold. And some people are trying to make a racket out of it. If the government, she do it, it must be right. How would you know? The trouble of this country, they got too many foreigners in it. I'll have your starboard to know that I am a Native American. I am born right here in this country, and I got my first paper. How about your second paper? I take it. I'm going to get it. You watch. Don't you worry, Tony. It's the eleventh time it's lucky. Right? What's that? Uh, he wants some more coffee. Here. Hey, do you ever run down... Hey, hey. Boy, you're absent-minded. Say, uh, tell me. How did you get on the force? Say, will you tell me how I can tell you anything? Oh, I almost forget. I brought you the sewing machine needles, what I did not have the other day, Mrs. Shields. Oh, thanks, Tony. Seems funny to me, ma'am. This fellow never has what's wanted in the first place. And why should I not find a reason for coming here often? And to taste Mrs. Jane a good coffee? Poppycock! What are you calling me? Don't mind poor Mr. Enderberry. No, thanks, but I do. The Kitty Crumpet Program, dedicated to boys and girls everywhere. Crime does not pay.
Steve, the only crimes you hear of nowadays are on the radio. Is that so? You'd be surprised. Well, I'll make you a little bet. If you'll let me turn on the police calls, I'll prove that I'm right. Go ahead, let them turn it on. Go ahead, get it. Well, now that that's settled, we listen to some police calls. Anything's better than listening to you. Pardon me, Mr. Ernest Mary. Do you mind if I change the radio? Yes. Oh, gee, uh, we wanted to listen to some police calls. They're swell. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Calling car 31, car 31, go to 918 Palm, potatoes burning on the stove, turn off the gas, that isn't. Oh, <laughs> I'm ready to close the deal. Flash Slavin couldn't come because the heat's on and he can't take any chances. He sent a wad of greenbacks to do his talking for him. How do I know you guys are on the level? Suit yourself then, it's no dice. Come on, Butch. Take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? Mercer wants you to unload a bunch of hot gold, doesn't he? That's right. Then why start acting high and mighty? You guys get every quarter you put into the gold, and we take the risk. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, my eye. Do you want to sell us the stuff, or don't you? Well, if Bugs Mercer didn't need the dough, we could sell the gold to the government ourselves for 35 bucks an ounce. If Bugs Mercer ever got caught with the stuff, he'd go up for a double rap. Evasion of income tax and selling illegal gold to the government, and you know it. Besides, if Mercer wanted to handle the deal, he wouldn't have sent you. Let's see the color of your dough. There you are, all 20s. Sit down, boys. There's a thousand double <coughs> And that's the last of the batch that moist us all of the way. That's all there's 20 in a roll and 50 rolls. Sure, I believe you. One T six seven seven one. Seven one. Any further details? No. Oh, okay. Thanks. Inspector, one man was killed and a watchman was wounded by two men going north on the Coverdale Road. They were in a dark coupe. License was one T six seven seven one. Send out General Arm. Have all state troopers stand by. Yes, sir. Calling all state troopers. Calling all state troopers. Coverdale Police Report, gunfight, about 9 a.m., unidentified stranger killed, private watchman shot by two men in dark coupe. Get me state troopers headquarters, quick. Freddy, Johnny? Road. Yes, sir. Looks like we got that invitation to a party, Freddy. Well, Tom, I never thought that... Marlon and Shields reporting. Seven, Any instructions seven, on that Coverdale murder? No. Gee, I'm sorry. I... Oh, that's all right, kid. Yes, sir. Good yes. Good you. Yes, sir. Have my driver pick me up at 4th and Linden right away. Right. Johnny, be careful. Don't worry, sis. Come on, Johnny. Goodbye, Dave. Goodbye.
I've waited a long time for this day. All keyed up? You bet. Well, be careful, Tom. You be careful, Johnny. Yes, sir. Any orders? Just to stand by. Okay. It's 9.30, sir. At top speed headed north, they should be about here. Division General Orders. All patrols, State Police Division A, General Orders. Car 4, Post A. Car 4 to Post A. Car 7. Post C. Car 7 to Post C. Car 5 to Post H. Car 5 to Post H. Car 3 Post L. Car 3 to Post L. Slaven speaking. Yes, Chief. So those monkeys ruined everything. Okay, I get everything set. What is it, Flash? Listen, Butch and Spike plucked Travers, and they wounded the watchman. The police is on their trail. Be sure that you get alibis ready for them. I think there's a horse chewing on the spare tire. A what? Cut out the smart cracks. We're going fast enough. Just want to see you put some miles on this crate, that's all. Yeah? Well, the easiest way for us to get picked up is to go through one of these hick towns like a fire department. I'm driving this car. Mm-hmm. I noticed that. Cut out speeding. He's still on our tail. You think we better step on it and not take any chances? I guess. How do you like that? Hey, there's a service station up ahead. Is that a break? Crazy kids sure take chances nowadays. Yeah, you might kill somebody driving like that. Ah, uh, they don't think anything in the other fellow's life. Pretty well boxed in. 
State Troopers headquarters. Freddy Shields. State Trooper Shields' brother on the wire. Inspector Burns speaking. Hello, Inspector. I just saw those two guys that committed the murder. State Troopers, all patrols, Division 2. State Troopers, all patrols, Division 2. Coverdale bandits are reported at Williams Gas Station, 14th and Rosedale. Coverdale bandits reported at Williams Gas Station, 14th and Rosedale. Get over there. Step on it, Jack. Yeah, one, one's a medium-sized guy, got on a dark suit and a soft hat. The other guy's about, oh, five foot eight, and he's wearing a trench coat. Partial description of Coverdale bandits. Number one, medium-sized man, dark suit. Number two, medium-sized, blonde hair, wearing trench coat. Yeah, well, if they try to get away before you get there, why, well, I'll try and stop them. Yes, sir. Special news bulletin. We are interrupting the program to announce that the two bandits who murdered a man in Coverdale and shot a watchman are reported at a gas station at 14th and Rosedale having a tire change. The garage is owned by a man named Williams. People in the vicinity, be careful. Let's go! went down the ditch. That fixes him. Step on it. Let's get the slavens. I got the jitters. Nobody was here when I arrived, but this fellow, and he's unconscious. Did you call an ambulance? Not yet. I'll check with headquarters. Haven't sent one out. Get Johnny Hand and get him inside. Easy, fella. Operator, get me state troop orders. <laughs> Corporal Marlin reporting from Williams Gas Station. Send an ambulance at once. The attendant was found slugged, apparently by the two suspects. Right. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir, right away. Stop all traffic until further orders. Boys. Our instructions are to cover all highways and stop all traffic. Jones, you go west on Euclid. You boys on the motor, cover Highway 97. Shields, take 94. Peters, you stay here and wait for the ambulance. All right, boys, let's go.
what's going on here, young fella? I've been stopped all along the road. Please get out. Huh? You too? Gosh, all hemlocks that don't even get a chance to get in a second before someone stops me. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to get out. It's okay with me. I'm beginning to like it. All right, you can get in now, mister. Finnegan! Off again, on again, Finnegan. Wait, I'll look your load over, then you can go. The heat's on. We can't go any farther this way. We gotta get another car, too. Don't tell me that you want me to get down from this truck. No, sir, I want to get on it and give my thumb a rest. Huh? All right, hop on the back. But I'm telling you, the way things are going, you'll only have to get down again. Well, thanks, Al. Okay, let it go. September Shields, follow Highway 9-4. And report to Sergeant Mullins, five miles beyond Fullerton Road intersection. Well, gosh, all hen age if it ain't happened again. Everybody stops me on this highway. Get that kid. There we are, buddy. Say, maybe you can tell me, mister. Shut up and stay where you are. Okay. Keep him covered a minute. Okay, Spike. All that with the groceries. What do we do with these two mugs? We let them out here, they'll be able to tip the coppers. We'll have to take them with us. I'll cover the driver. You keep your eye on the kid and the 40 grand in that sack. Okay, get out of that canvas, bud. Now listen, you. There's gonna be a 38 in your back. Get moving, keep moving, and don't stop for anything. Well, that'll be something.
Listen, Whisker Puss, don't move from this spot or I'll plug you. Hey, Butch, come up here. He's gonna talk. You tip the cops. Oh, forget it. We'll be miles away from here when he does. Come on. Let's get out of here. Hey, Spike! Come here. The dough's gone. Hey, the law. Duck under there. I'll take care of this. Hey, what's going on here? Everything is gonna be all right. Do you have any difficulty getting through the squad staked out at Fullerton? No, they let me through all right. You're lying. There's no squad staked out there. Car three. Calling car three. That's Johnny's car. Car three. Report to headquarters. Sergeant waiting. That's funny. He should have been there right after he left the gas station. Cut over to Highway 94. Attention all state troopers, Division 2. Abandon all emergency posts north of Fullerton Road and return to regular patrols. So, the heat's off on the Fullerton Road, huh? This mouthpiece comes in handy. You're telling me. Attention Corporal Marlin. Attention Corporal Marlin. Abandon Fullerton Crossing Post and proceed along 9-4 at your own discretion. Which way on 94? South. We'll probably pass Johnny Shields heading north. What are you stopping here for? This is where you get out. Me? Yeah. With this trooper's car in uniform, I got a chance of making it into Slavens. What's the idea? If we split up, maybe we both can make it. You beat it through the hills. How are you going to square things with Flash? Forty grand is a lot of sugar. Leave that to me. Come on, get out. Old fish hooks. It ain't you again. What happened to you? A couple of fellas grabbed my truck, stick a gun in my back, and then bash me over the head. Where did they go? I don't know. I was out like a light. I heard a car come blowing the siren. That's all I remember. Are you all right? Yep. If they don't jump me again. They changed cars on us. They must be ahead of us on this road. Going, Tom. Let's get him up above.
Oh, hello, Tom. Ready? Look what I got. What's this? Gold. $40,000 worth of gold. Didn't you hear what I said? That's gold, Tom. Yes. Hey, what's the matter, fella? Nothing? Why? Come on now, don't hold out on me. No, there's not a thing. Uh, nothing. Come on. What's the matter? Ready? You've always been a pretty game little guy, haven't you? Well, I can take it, if that's what you mean. I knew you could. Johnny... Just met with an accident. Johnny, well, where is he? He's not. Yes. <laughs> I thought you said you could take it. I can. Well? Can't you smile? Good try. That's better. Trooper. <laughs> Here. Butch Barker. Freddy and the watchman definitely identify him as one of the men. He works for Flash Slavin. Slavin, eh? There isn't a racket in town that he hasn't his hand in. And you think that he's behind this? We've never been able to pin anything on him. As far as we know, he's in the smutting business. Every man working there has a record. I've always thought it was just a blind for one of his rackets. You're right. Confidentially, Marlon. The Secret Service is convinced that his business is nothing but a cover-up for a gold racket. So that's where Freddy's bag of gold comes in. It belongs to a racketeer by the name of Mercer, who was doing a stretch at Alcatraz. Part of a fortune in gold that he sorted away when times were good. And the gold was headed for Slavens. Exactly. To be melted down and sold to the United States Mint for almost double its value. Marlon? Of course, we have to investigate these shootings. But we must be careful not to conflict with the Secret Service. You understand? Yes, sir. It's a difficult assignment. Do you want it? Yes, sir. In fact, I was going to ask you for it. You see, Johnny Shields and I... Yes, I, I understand. It won't be easy. Slavin has influence. He used to be able to squash anything. I know that. The rest is up to you. Good luck. Thank you, Inspector. I have a couple of time cards for you to sign. The boss punched in. They answer questions better than alibis. And believe me, you'll need them. Flash, I can explain that. Listen, the boss hit me on two hours ago. I never forget you, mixing hot gold with hot lead. Butch gummed up the works. Butch may have gummed up the works. But where's the coin? And where's the gold? I tell you, Butch. Hey, I wonder if Butch pulled a fast one on me. Where is Butch? Search me after he shot that watchman in Cobra Daily. Come in. Hello, Corporal. How are you? Nice to see you. Slavin? I understand one of your boys got badly hurt. Yes. He died. Oh, too bad. I'm going to send the biggest bunch of flowers in this town to his funeral. A lot of good that'll do, Johnny. Just wanted to be nice. Sit down. What can I do for you? Just a little routine checkup. Who was that who just went out? One of my boys, Spike Dolan. Where was he this morning? Right here. Uh, mind if I see the records? You know, Corporal, there's a perfectly legal way of inspecting employers' books. Yes, I know. Swear out a warrant. Get a court order. 
If you don't wear a badge and a gun, you wouldn't be so officious. I've heard that line before. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He has time cards. They just happen to be here. He punched the clock at nine this morning. All right. I'll take your word for it. Oh, don't take my word for it. Here it is. Do you uh, know anything of the whereabouts of Butch Barker? Who? Oh, Butch Barker, no, no. I fired him. He's a little bit too nervous for this gold business. Anything else? No, that's all for now. Except to tell you that this refining of old gold is the best alibi you ever had. Time clock and everything. Thanks, Slavin. You are welcome. Bill, get in touch with the chief. He wants to see you right away. Hmm. Fine. So you're the one that's been breaking all my dishes. Who, me? Now, did you ever see me break a dish? Yes. Oh, you did? Well, you shouldn't go around snooping like that. And another thing, I've been working hard all day over a hot stove and I... All right, have it your way. Hello, Jane. Oh, hello, Tom. Hiya, Tom. Hi, kid. Freddie, be a good boy and finish the dishes, huh? You bet I'll finish them. You don't mind, do you? No, I don't mind. <laughs> Every day I got to do dishes. If you have one more meal here, you'll have to start paying board. It's a no skinner from your nose if I come here to do business. You certainly do sell Miss Jane a lot of needles. Or uh, is it needles? Good evening, Tony. Mr. Enderbury. Hello, Tom. Evening. You two still arguing? You mean yes. <laughs> have it your way. I don't need your help. I've been dragging my feet on and off this chair for 30 years. Suit yourself. Okay, on the mouth. You just like one a big crab. A man as you try to help you. And what do you do? Ah. You almost bite his head off. What's the matter, Tom? Is it Mr. Slavin? He's got the best set of alibis of anybody in this town. But they don't fool me. What about Butch Barker? Any trace of him? We'll find him. When we do, it'll be the end of Mr. Slavin and a lot of others. How do you like your room? Not bad. I'll have it cleaned up tomorrow. Well, it isn't necessary to do that. We'll have our own place before you know it. Just you? And Freddie? And me. Without any borders. <laughs> I guess I go. The good riddance, I'd say. What? Yeah. Uh. Capital, 6960. Hello, Chief. Marlin speaking. But, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Tom, what's wrong? The inspector's right. Slavin has influence. 
I've been taken off the case and told to report to the barracks in the morning. But that's where they're wrong. What do you mean? I'm turning in my badge. Oh, you can't do oh, that. Oh, yes, I can. I'm not going to let anything stop me from finding Johnny's murderer. And Slavin's going to lead me to him. Slavin? You mean the guy that runs the smeltering place? That's him, all right. Well, that's that. Tom! You smart. He hit the dough. He hit the dough. Hey, what do you mean? Now look, Spike, you got to listen to me. I was you listen to me, I'll do the talking. We need that kid on two counts. We got to shut his trap, and he's got to take us to where he's hitting that money. And where do you think you're going to find him? Wouldn't I like to know? Hello, Flash. What are you doing in here? I was just getting the lowdown from Butch. So you finally showed up, huh? Yeah. It's a nice night, ain't it, Flash? It won't be so nice for you when the boss gets you to work. Now look, Flash, I can explain everything. Hey, what's that? Don't sit there like an idiot. Go and look. Looks like him just turning the corner now. Yeah, that's him, all right. Don't let him out, night, Spike. the gold. Where is he? In Flash Slavens. Did he see you? Well, yes. You wait here. Quit 
quit slamming them doors so loud. I'm sorry. That's his car. Anyone see you come in? Well, no. Who'd you think it was? A couple of fellas seemed sure somebody came in here. In here? No, nobody came in here. I told them nobody did. Freddy been doing anything? Freddy's all right. Did you bark your shins? Oh, little. Yeah. I guess you reckon I'm a little sour. I never could go gallivanting around like other folks. Well, uh, you've had a pretty tough break. No, I'm just a cantankerous old cripple. You're all right. Well, I've got to be getting down to headquarters. I guess I'll have to go. Here, let me give you a hand. Say, you're forgetting your gun. Thanks. Ain't she a dandy? Yes, new type. Has a hair trigger. I never even owned an air rifle. I used to wish I could go around shooting off guns like other boys. <laughs> What have you done, you fool? I reckon I was a little nervous. I never fired a gun before in my life. Freddy! Freddy! Hey, what's all the shooting about? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I don't think I can get out of here without any help. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> I thought he was going to open that door, so I stepped back and... One minute there I was, and, well, the next, where was I? It's a lucky thing for you that trap door dropped you into the cellar. You better lay low till I get my hands on Spike Dolan and his partner. Wait a minute, Tom. I think I got a better idea. Now, look, here's what we'll do. What's on your mind? You know what's on my mind. Gold. Well, it's my business. What can I do for you? Mm, nothing. I thought maybe you could put me in touch with those two guys who were on the truck. They were here last time I saw them. Well, if you were so anxious to get in touch with them, why don't you scram out of here? Well, I... I was a little bit afraid of them. I snatched their gold and... Well, I found out it wasn't any good unless it was melted. That's how I happened to be here when they showed up. So I thought I'd have a little talk with you. You should know I don't do any business of that kind. Well, a guy never knows unless he asks. You know now? Oh, sure. No hard feelings. I'd sure like to get in touch with those two guys. I bet they'd lay out some heavy sugar for that gold. Well, thanks, anyhow. Wait a minute. You haven't turned it over to the cops? You mean the gold? Look, what do you think I am? You know, I'm old enough to want some easy money. And I mean without working for it. Aren't you kind of ratting on your brother? Doing business with the guys who are blamed for his death? I ain't ratting on nobody. My brother's dead and, well, I've got a few plans of my own. If I get you in touch with those two, where do I come in? I'll cut you in. All right, I'll get them over here. Wait a minute. Not so fast. This joint's too hot. Now, supposing that you and I meet them someplace. So you are really on the level, huh? What do you think? Okay, let's go. Which way now? You turn at the next corner. Is the road to your house? 
Sure, where else do you think I'd hide? Wait a minute. Is there anybody home? Yeah, but we don't have to go in the house. I put the stuff in the basement. All right, let's go. This is it all right? Oh, well, sure, that's it. You didn't think I'd double cross a pal, did you? Reach for it. Yeah, but you ain't my pal. All right, get over there. Get against the wall. You too, Mr. Slavin. Get going. Well, I guess the party's over. That's why you're wrong. Reach for it, Trooper. It's the boss. Get his gun, Spike. to interrupt, but here's where the government steps in. Government? The name's Rankin. United States Secret Service. Get over there, Doc Clark, alias Enderberry. Doc Clark, Clark, Endenberry, and a hundred other names. Sure, he's the boss at the head of this school racket. We've been watching them for months. And tonight, they gave us the answer. Too bad the government's going to be cheated. Butch and Spike have been identified, and they're going up on a murder rap. And the doctor and our friend, Mr. Slavin, I believe will be there to keep them company. Even if they did try to have me taken off the case. They didn't do it, Tom. I did. You see, the government does things in its own way. Okay, you sure had me fooled. Hey, then you mean you're really not Italian? All I was, or ever hoped to be, Freddy, I owe to this. Italian written humor by J. Frothingham Ginsburg? <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> 